The world woke this morning to a new political reality in France and Greece, but it's clear tonight new faces do not mean an end to old problems. Greek voters sent a strong message of anti-austerity, but the leader they elected now says he cannot form a government, wrenching the already chaotic economy into even deeper turmoil, causing many to ask, what now? Neil McDonald begins our coverage from Washington tonight. Neil? Well, Amanda, Nicolas Sarkozy's loss to a socialist is a big headline, but it's what's happening in Greece that's frightening the rest of the world. <laughs> Greeks are sick to death of government austerity, and at the polls, they turned against the two big parties that supported it. <laughs> I feel satisfaction, said this voter. Finally, a change has come. Unsurprising, given that Greece's economy has shrunk 13 percent from its peak and is forecast to lose another 5 percent this year. You're not talking about a recession. You're talking about something like the Great Depression in the United States in the 1930s. But Greece is also insolvent. Without life support payments from Europe, it would not be able to pay its government employees, let alone service its debts. And government austerity is the price for that continued life support. The problems that we left behind us late on Friday afternoon are exactly the same this morning. And we need to face these problems if we continue in this same manner. By September, I think that we will have an additional 25,000 uh, businesses closing up. Still, many of the election's winners are vowing to repudiate austerity. Presumably at that stage, uh, they decide to leave the euro. Desmond Lachman has long been predicting the euro will unravel. This, he says, is the beginning. At the core, uh, Europe is really very rotten. And, you know, you can't hold this together. In fact, polls indicate most Greeks actually want to remain in the euro, even as they oppose the conditions for continued membership. And their politicians are just as torn. Today, the party that won the most votes announced it could not form a coalition. I did what I could do, said Antonis Samaras, but it was not possible. The task of forming a government now falls to the second biggest winner, a far-left anti-austerity party, and so on. If no coalition emerges, there will be new elections, and fear about the world's second most powerful currency, Amanda, will only grow. All right, thanks, Neil.